Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new vlog and I am here in Minehead at Butlins. This is the first of the vlogs that I'm doing this year here at Minehead. I'm going to be doing a few different ones to show you the different accommodations. Later in the year when I'm here in the summer I'm going to be doing a few more of the activities but in this particular vlog I'm going to be showing you all the way around the camp. We're going to be doing a whole tour. I'll be showing you a tour of the room. We have a Comfort Plus apartment on this trip so I'll be taking you around to show you what that looks like and just the general area inside the Skyline Pavilion. So this one is going to be basically showing you everything a little walk around a little bit of information and then later in the year I've got a couple of different accommodations I'll be able to show you inside of those as well as like I say a few more of the activities and different things you can do here so if you're not already subscribed and you want more Butlins content later in the year please do hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon and then you'll be notified when a new vlog goes up there'll be one in June then September and then also in December this year and different types of accommodation each time that I come back and do another vlog so let's get going I'm going to take you to look around the the apartment first and then we're going to do a walk around of the whole park time for a little room tour so we are in orchid place i believe it's called i'll put it on the screen if i've said that wrong and we are in 104 which is a ground floor so we did ask for a ground floor in fact i may even have paid extra i think for a ground floor i'm pretty sure that i did and this area is called plantation key which is really close to the skyline pavilion which i'll show you when we head out a bit later so as you come in this is a comfort plus apartment so you've got a mirror there on the left hand side and some little hooks there to hang coats and stuff on and as you come in on the left you've got your first bedroom which has got two single beds in and this is really nice they're decorated nicer than the regular rooms we had a silver room last time and they are quite basic these are a little bit nicer and you've got some space here for putting clothes like a little wardrobe space but you've got some whatever you call those cubby holes to put your stuff in and an iron then across the way here you've got the other bedroom this one has a double bed and when you have the Comfort Plus apartments, they do provide towels. In some of the more basic accommodation, the Standard and the Silver, I believe, don't have towels. I've had to bring those before. So always check when you book with Butlins whether you need to bring your own towels. Then this room has a TV in it as well. There's a little wardrobe space again. There's a safe and a hairdryer. So if anyone's wondering about that, some of the more basic accommodation in the Silver rooms, they don't have a hairdryer. You can always rent them from the higher centre along with towels if you have forgotten them. But this one does actually have towels and a hairdryer and a little stool there for getting ready. There's a mirror just in there. Then as you come out, there's bathroom, which is a little bit upgraded again from the Silver accommodation. It's a tiny bit smaller than this, I think, and it's not decorated quite as nice. I don't remember the tiles and everything in the silver room. It just looked all a little bit more basic. And then as you come into the main area, you have a nice little corner sofa. Then you have a patio. We're on the ground floor, so it's a patio or you have a balcony. Mum's already out there taking in the, the car park view. <laughs> And I think um, just opposite here is an actual little check-in, this building uh, just out here. I think you can check in there, possibly. I'm not 100% sure. We checked in at the main walk-up entrance on this occasion. Then you have another TV just coming around this way. You then have a nice little seating area and a kitchen. So it's got quite a nice big fridge and freezer. You've got a full cooker and hob and everything. And a microwave there. So it's really good. You can make your own meals if you want to. Of course, there's plenty of places to eat and we're going to be exploring all of that over the next few days. But this is actually really nice. And I will say it smells really good in here compared to some of the older rooms. Just to clarify what I mean by that, I'm not saying that I've ever had accommodation here that smells bad, but some of the rooms like the standard and the silver, just regular rooms, not apartments, they have that kind of old building smell. The only way I can describe it, if you imagine like an old library or an old school building, that kind of musty smell, they sometimes smell a little bit like that. But this apartment smells really fresh, really nice. I'm not getting any musty old vibes from the smell in here is really nice very very clean the bathroom is spotless i know a lot of people with butlins have heard horror stories about things not being clean or anything like that it is really really nice and we paid i'm pretty certain it was 90 something pounds for four nights for two people for this accommodation i honestly don't think you can go wrong it's midweek so it's monday to friday four nights you leave on the friday and it's just perfect like this is so nice so comfort plus is this apartment type they also have comfort um it's one level down i think there's gold i don't know where that sits 
between comfort and comfort plus i'm not 100 percent sure um, and then you have silver accommodation you have standard which is the very very basic and then up from this one um, there's also deluxe again i don't know if that sits above or below this it's somewhere around there but they have deluxe apartments and then the top ones would be going on to staying in the bay side or bay view hotel all sorts of different accommodation here at butlins um, i will put a link in the description you can like see all the different types there's various different ones but this is the nicest that i've ever stayed in here and then of course you have caravans for private hire um, which people own those are way at the back though so these are really well placed and really nice and for 90 something pounds whatever we paid is just so good and like i was saying we do have a car park view here what people are parking there and taking their things yeah so you've got a short walk really it's good yeah the, so this is the parking if you are bringing a car you can literally just park right here mm -hmm. and then bring your stuff in some of the views will be you know kind of out onto these gardens and stuff mm, nice it's actually not it's not loud and, and people quiet. people are just unloading and going straight to the chalet that's the thing like yeah. obviously when people are here at butlins you're not necessarily coming and going loads in your car so this isn't super loud it's not right by the road or anything so yeah, really nice and peaceful. I'll be loving this, drinking my coffee in the mornings. Yes, out on the balcony. It's yeah. <laughs> I mean, we are covered it's up. It's covered over, yes. Yeah, yeah so. Unless it's really windy, it'd be quite nice out here. Yeah, you could sit outside. It's quite sheltered. I will show you here, you can see. So in terms of the outside of these buildings, I don't know how well you'll be able to see it. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. They do need a lick of paint. This whole area, plantation, key. The staircases and stuff in the outside, you can kind of see here. They're looking a bit rusty. Um, they do need some work, like under here, you can see it all. So when you look at them from the outside, you can kind of think, oh, they look a bit, definitely the outside does. But when you actually get inside these apartments, they're so nice. Like I was saying, nothing is like old looking or musty. It smells good, it's all clean. Um, so don't be put off by what they look like from the outside, because yeah they're really nice inside here i'm just going to show you a couple more details of things that people may want to know so first of all they do have some usb ports here one of the problems in some of the older apartments is there are hardly any plug sockets so there's one here and then you've got some usbs there as well and in a second we'll check out what they've got in the bedroom some people probably want to see the size of the fridge and the freezer i think so this is the size of the freezer just a small little uh, freezer there but you could get a few bits in and that's the size of the fridge. Again, quite small, but plenty of room to put your bits in. And in here is a tea towel, little uh, cleaning cloth. I think there's something else in here. Just like a little sponge and, oh, some uh, washing up liquid as well. Then in the top cupboard here, we have a couple of toasters. We've got two toasters. We've got a fancier one and a more basic one. I'm not sure why we need two toasters, but there we go. Then in here, you have plates and bowls at the top there, some wine glasses, regular glasses and mugs. So that's very well equipped, I would say. And obviously there is a kettle and uh, they do give you some of this UHT milk, but we're gonna go and buy some milk. And then you have your cutlery. And I have to say, it all looks very clean. Because I do always worry in apartments that have got like cutlery and stuff, like how clean is it? But it all looks uh, very nice in there. Oh, and there is a corkscrew and tin opener and whatnot. Then in the bottom, you have pots and pans, frying pan. This is very well equipped. You could fully cook a meal in here. And just to show you the sockets in the bedroom. So they do have a plug socket on either side of the bed, which is good. Then there's a couple here if you're plugging in like hair straighteners and stuff like that see what they've got in the other bedroom again there's two plug sockets there so this is much better than the room that we had the silver room last time there were hardly any plugs anywhere and just over here there's a couple more as well time for a little tour around the whole camp we're going to try and get around everywhere this is plantation key so these are the apartments that we're in i think some of these might be gold some of them are comfort plus but these ones all have like a balcony and a patio and it's quite a nice little area um, there's a little play park, there's no rubbish anywhere, it's all very well kept. And each section is called something different, so I think this one is Dams in Green, and we're in Orchid Place. I think yes, it's Orchid Place. Or Orchid Square. Well. Orchid Square, <laughs> Orchid something. Mm -hmm. And just to show you where this is in relation to everything else, as you walk out of the end here, you can see the diner is here and the Skyline Pavilion is just there. There's a little village shop on the corner here. So this is very close to everything. Just over here to the right is the new park that they're building. I think it's called the Skyline Park, I believe. I'll put it on the screen. We'll get a bit closer, you can see the work that's being done. And the area to the right as we're walking around, there's all of this is Plantation Key. So it's quite a big 
section of the camp. You can see the progress here on this new part. I think they've already got one of these at either Bognor or Skegness. I don't know if it's open yet, but they've been building it in the other locations as well. But it's very close, isn't it? Our it apartment is, yeah, we're in. It's not far to walk into everything. I no. It. So it's very close by. They finished for the day today, but they've been working on it the whole time yeah, since we've been here. I think it's opening summer of this year, so 2024. It's actually a little map here of Plantation Key. So Orchid Square is up at the top there. That's where we are. And there's lots of other buildings. And next to it are the Seaside Lodges, which are just here. We're gonna have a little walk around here so you can see. And I've got one of these booked for December. And I believe they sleep six people, I wanna say. But they're a much bigger accommodation. You've got the kind of outside patio area and they all have their own parking spaces. But they're very nice inside. Obviously have a nice lounge, nice kitchen. You can go on the website and take a look at some pictures of these. But uh, yeah, these are the seaside lodges, just this section here. And as you come along the side here of the seaside lodges, you have Splash Water World. This outdoor area, like the little outdoor pool, I don't know if in the summer they're gonna actually use this. At this time of year, we're April at the moment. So it's too cold. It's actually very cold this year for April. We were saying earlier, weren't we? It's, yeah, it's very, very, very cold. And you can see the flumes and everything over there. The pool does get very, very busy. We were walking past to go to breakfast this morning. Great queue there, Huge queue, yes. So on these breaks, just be aware that there will be a queue for the pool in most situations, and they do like sessions. So you go in, and I think you have like a coloured band that always used to be the system, and then you have to come out. So you can't just go in there for however long you want. It is like session swimming. I remember back in the day though, mum and I used to come uh, when we were little. Yeah. She used to bring us and um, it was always the same then. And we were saying this morning, like there's a lot of things that could use a lick of paint. Let me just zoom in on here. So you can see the outside of Splash Water World. They really could do with a little repaint here. It's a little bit faded and it's the same with the outside of some of the buildings. So although the outside of things could look a little bit better, and look a bit tired. I do think the actual pool is very well maintained. Yeah, yeah. And the inside the, of the chalet. The inside well. of the rooms are very good. So just bear that in mind. Things might look a little bit tired from the outside, but actually inside, yeah, most things are good. Lovely, yeah, well. everything we've eaten so far has been really good. This is the Beach Kuma bar here. It's like a little pubby type place, and you can get breakfast in there, which we had this morning. It's very nice. It's really good, wasn't it? Very nice. Yeah, we really enjoyed that. Just to let you know the hours for the pool. So Monday. 1 p.m. till 5 p.m. Then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 10 till 3 p.m. And this is a midweek break that we're on, so those are the only days that we need to know about. Yeah. So when you're here at the weekend, it'll be different times. But that's what it is during the week. So that's actually quite short hours, isn't it? On the Monday it is, isn't it? Yeah, but even I would say 10 till 3, that's not no, that long not of a day, really. So just bear that in mind and plan accordingly. We don't know how long the actual session is, though, we three to I guess that would depend on how busy it is. But you can actually see a picture I can get out of the light. Slightly funny lighting, you can kind of see there what it looks like. And the huge climbing frame thing here. I think this is an extra bookable activity, so you have to pay extra for this, I believe. I think you can get some kind of activity pass and maybe you can use this uh, when you have the activity pass. Or you could probably pay separately for it, but they have the uh, safety harnesses you can see up there. That would not be for me, a bit high. And as we walk past the pool here, we're coming into more of the accommodation. So on the left, these buildings that are kind of blue colour on the outside are, I believe, mostly silver rooms. And this whole section is called Pacific Wharf. And then we're going to show you all the sections as we go around. We'll just go over here first to the right hand side to Surfers Point. And these are the standard rooms. So these are the most basic rooms that you can get at Butlins. They are literally a room with a bathroom. The bathrooms, I believe, don't have showers, which is a huge downside. They only have a bath unless that's changed. Like I said, later in the year, I'm going to try one of these. <laughs> They're very cheap on these midweek breaks, especially. And again, when you see these, they're a bit tired on the outside, looking a bit mossy. But inside, for the most part, they're usually clean. For what you pay. For what you pay, very basic. I believe I've got one of these in September. Again, a Monday to Friday, so four night break. I think I paid 49 pounds in total mm. for two people. Later in the year in September, you'll be able to see inside of these. They're very, very basic, as you can see. Just kind of rows of chalets. I remember staying in these mm. many, many years ago. Yeah, they're the, what they originally, Butlins, all looked yeah, like that. Yeah, looked like this. Rows, weren't they? And exactly, yeah. So this is very kind of 
classic butlins but yeah these are the standard ones and the silver ones in the rows over here are a little bit of a step up the decor is just slightly nicer they have showers the yeah they just look a tiny bit better and if anyone's looking for the butlins sign to take your photo it is just here opposite the little row of apartments in Anemone Drive it's quite a nice little photo op and this does actually light up at night as well the little button sign so it's quite nice for a photo this shows you the map of Pacific Wharf this building in the middle here I believe is the dining room I think I've got that right we're gonna on the dining plan, yes if you're on the dining plan I will be doing the dining plan on an upcoming trip so this time mum and I are just eating wherever we're just kind of going in with the flow but I will do a dining plan on a future episode and then you'll be able to see what that's all about what it's like I'll obviously take you in there you can see all the food is and everything but yeah, it's quite a big section this, lots of rows of apartments and these are mostly silver rooms. There may be some comforts I think, possibly as well. And just running alongside all of the rows, so you can see the silver ones here, you can see quite a lot of cars parked. Those parking spaces are dedicated for these rooms and these are deluxe apartments and they've got little patios and they're a bit nicer inside. A little garden. Yeah, yeah they're, they're quite nice, cute. Yeah. I'm going to be staying in one of those in June. <laughs> I am working my way through every type of Butlin's accommodation. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do them all at some stage. Just coming up through here, you've got this building in the middle, and I don't think this is used for much anymore. It used to be the nursery. So back in the day of Butlin's, this is where you used to bring the babies to get looked after. <laughs> they had a whole team, of, whole team of people looking after the, the children. I think it was also used as an admin building, maybe for like the HR people or something like that. But you still see little... Uh, details like this but yeah, I think it's mainly office space now if it's used at all I'm not 100% sure and just in front of us here is one of the dining rooms so there's several different ones you can have premium dining or regular and I think there might be one or two options for both of those so you'll get allocated a dining room basically this one is called the deck and I believe this one is for the regular dining the times we did actually have a look didn't we and breakfast yeah. is 8 until 10 30 dinner is 4 30 till 7 so it's quite early so I uh, hope you like your dinner early <laughs> if you're on the dining plan. Obviously most people here are families and they definitely would eat dinner before seven when you've got children. Maybe on the adult weekends it might be a bit later because obviously at the moment we're on a midweek break but for the adult weekends perhaps the dining times are a bit different. You'd have to check before you come. And on the right hand side is Ocean Point. So these are more apartments that are kind of on a two level kind of situation. Always bear that in mind with luggage. If you yeah, struggle, or, if you, or you have a lot of luggage, yeah. then you'll need a ground floor and you can pay extra for a ground floor. And as we're walking along, so you can see this is now Ocean Drive restaurant. So they're all kind of in this building, I believe, but there's like different dining rooms for the different dining plans. There was a lot of work being done on these at one point and a lot of these were empty, so that may still be the case. And I do think, now I think about it, these are silver apartments mostly, which makes sense that these don't look the best from the outside because silver is the lowest type of apartment that you can get. And here we've got Oyster Bay. These, I think, house Comfort and Comfort Plus, similar to what we're in. These look a little bit nicer from the outside. They look slightly more recently painted. There are no lifts, so if you're on the top floor, that is something to think about with luggage or if you have mobility issues and stuff stuff like that um, you're not going to want to be up there so just pay attention to that when you're booking this just shows you the scale as well of Oyster Bay it is very big when you look at whole map of Butlins and you see the accommodation it is just huge the amount of accommodation they have here I believe that's why you can get such a good deal because they just have so much accommodation and on these midweek breaks they're gonna have some empty ones right? yes definitely and but it's so cheap sometimes honestly some of the prices like the price for this trip yeah, yeah. was so good so yeah that just shows you what the area looks like and the scale of just this one section and some of these further back so we're getting right towards the back of the camp now these are the ones that are actually not in use as you can see they need redoing and I think these have just been left empty I'm not going to go and peer through the windows just in case and right at the top of the camp here you've got the staff accommodation I love that they have a little bank of phone boxes here it's very vintage I think they look as if they may still work I don't know if yeah, they do, they do. <laughs> but then that's how you can tell that you're by the staff accommodation now back in the day when Butlins first opened I think people used to actually stay in these these were guest accommodation I may have that wrong but definitely now this is staff accommodation there is a laundrette here, just in case you need to uh, do any washing. Open between 8 and 5, last wash at 3.30. There's a little sofa in there, you could uh, 
chill while chill you're waiting. While you're waiting for your <laughs> and there's a supermarket here as well. And right at the top here, next to the staff accommodation, once you've gone past the supermarket, you have the lakeside caravan park. So these are caravans owned by people. So if you own one of these caravans, you can either just stay in it whenever you want. You can rent them out. We did have a look as we were coming in. They have the sales. Yeah, they have the sales centre further down. They were, sh I think, 40 grand, something like that. They were, the bigger one was 48. Isn't it? 48, yes. And then, of course, you've probably got fees on top of that, whatever yeah. it is, to keep it here. Um, but if you rent them out, I, as I understand it anyway, you can then have the wristbands for the entertainment. You, you basically can use the facilities. So, um, yeah, you can own these caravans if you want to. And just opposite there, we now have the very top of Holnacott Village. So these ones, I believe, are Comfort, Comfort Plus. And if you request a ground floor Comfort Plus, you may end up over here. And I think further down, there may be some other room types. Like I said, it's kind of confusing to know exactly which types of rooms are in which area because there's so many different types and uh, they're all over the place. <laughs> so it takes quite a lot of figuring out to know where you're gonna be. But these ones are all in rows, as you can see quite a big section again. It's just worth mentioning that if you are in some of these apartments sort of nearer the caravans or if you are indeed staying in a caravan it is quite a long walk isn't it back yeah. to the Skyline Pavilion. Yeah. Further away from all the central. Yeah so some of these ones far away really are quite a fair walk. A now I say that it really isn't that bad if you're on an adult weekend and you're drunk, it would be quite some walk <laughs> to get all the way <laughs> to find, find your chalet, know your name, get all the way back here. Um, it really would be quite a, an undertaking. So it is good to be closer, but um, obviously it depends what category you book and uh, you can always call them, like I said, to request one that's closer. You will have to pay a bit more, but uh, yeah, just plan accordingly. If you don't yeah, like a lot of walking. On your, on your circumstances, isn't it? How close you want to be. Yeah. Exactly. It's safe to say that some of the further back ones, probably a bit quieter, yeah, less foot quieter, traffic, yeah. less people walking around. So there's pros and cons. And we're just going to walk over here because you can see in the distance they do have a little church here, which I believe back in the day was kind of a, a working church, as it were. It used to actually be functional. Yes, I don't believe, I think a question a lot of people are going to ask, can you get married in it? I believe the answer is no. Um, I think <laughs> I think there may be one person I've seen had some kind of blessing in there. Um, they arranged that with a local vicar, but I do not think that that is a regular thing, no. So yeah, the church is just kind of uh, situated in among the apartments very randomly, but it has got this cute little garden kind of bit here. It's very small. That sign that says this church is open daily, that's probably been there for 30 years or something. So I don't know that you can actually go in there at the minute. But it's still a very cute little building. And we're just walking now back towards the Skyline Pavilion. So just on the right here, there's more of the deluxe apartments that have their own parking spaces opposite. And then we're back to the silver rooms here. So we're just kind of walking back down the other side now. These deluxe apartments, there's not a whole load of them. So these sell out very quickly. Quite often when you'll be booking your break, these don't even come up. And that's usually why there's just not very many of them. And now we're back here, just kind of at the beginning. The Skyline Pavilion is just there. We're about to head in to go and get some dinner. And you can see the caravans we were talking about. This is the sales center. So you can come here to find out how much they cost, how much it costs to have one on site. I don't have that information. Probably quite expensive, I would imagine. But like I say, you can rent them out. And Firehouse Grill is where we ate last night. It was really good, wasn't it? Very nice. Yeah, we really enjoyed that. I'll put in a little uh, clip of what we had. It was really, really good. It's kind of like Nando's. Similar. Yeah. yeah. And as you walk in here, this is called the boardwalk area, I think. It's just a little shopping area before you get to Skyline Pavilion. So you've got the inn on the green here on the left. And I should just mention that the Firehouse Grill is closed on a Tuesday. Now that is in April. Maybe it's seasonal. Maybe during the summer it's open every day. But currently it is uh, closed on Tuesdays. And a lot of these stores, it is currently 6.22. Most of them are closed. You've got the booking shop here to book more trips while you're here. You also have like a toy shop and stuff. All of this closes, um, I would imagine at like five, 5.30 maybe. You do have the supermarket on the right hand side though, that is open. There's a pasty shop here that is also closed. That must be daytime only. It closes at five o'clock. You've got chopsticks here, which is new. This does open into the evening. 
I just had a look at the opening times. This actually opens till 11.30 and then on the weekends it opens till 3.30 a.m. and 2 a.m. on a Sunday. And I'll just let you know the opening time of the supermarket because that might be interesting to know. Okay, they're open every day from 8 a.m. until 11, Monday through Thursday, and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They're open till midnight, so pretty late in case you need to get anything. We're just out here in the fairground now, so the Skyline Pavilion is just behind us here. And we were having a little laugh because my dad once put me and my brother on one of these. How old were we? Eight you were 18 months old. I was... thought it was one of those. <laughs> <laughs> this was this was back in the 80s. It's good if I didn't slide out of there. It's surprising, no, no, surprising no. I'm alive, really. Well, they hang down, don't they? Straight. Dad didn't realise it. <laughs> he thought it was like a kiddie ride. I don't think it was there. That's why. I don't think it was quite as big as that one, but still, a bit of a scary experience. Um, but I'm going to take you around just to show you. So they have the. I think they call these. Um, paratroopers or something i call it the umbrella ride so we'll see that in action in a second i'm assuming that's not the actual same one that i used to go on in the no, 80s and 90s and then just over here they have the go carts which is extra money we'll go and see how much that is i can't remember oh seven pounds i can see from here so you have to pay extra for that but the rest of the fairground rides are included in the price of your trip or your day pass if you are just here for the day and they do have a little height chart here just to show you so that you don't have the same incident that we had, or my dad had, I should say, uh, of how tall you have to be. So they've got the waltzers, yeah, paratroopers, I thought yeah, that's what it was called. Yeah, see, there we go. You should have been... <laughs> dad clearly missed the memo on the, the board. We also just said, I think I was probably about two. Yeah, yeah. I think you were probably about two. <laughs> <laughs> Not 18 I wasn't, months. I wasn't there to supervise, you didn't realise. No, clearly after that you, you always were. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you can check this, but these are the different heights for everything that they have here. So, like we say, the chair planes. We have the dodgems over there, I remember riding those yeah. here in the 90s as well. Back in the day when you used to be able to smash into each other on the dodgems, you're not supposed to do that so much anymore. And here is the ride in action. It's actually not that high. I always remember it being, when I was a kid, it felt really high, but it's really not. They also have the Helter Skelter there as well. So it is very, like, traditional fairground rides that they have. They do have a carousel, but it's not in use at the moment. You can see it's under construction there. And also they have a waltzer. Not for me. I don't like the waltzer. It makes me feel sick, but a lot of people love that. That's probably the biggest, like, thrill ride that they have is a waltzer. And they do have a little tugboat ride over there as well is just starting to move that looks quite fun actually <laughs> and just coming inside here there is Peppa Pig doing a photo op there is a line to meet them I obviously won't show you because I don't want to show people in line but uh, you have to get in a queue it's like a Disney <laughs> to meet the characters and um, we've just come out the side entrance here you've got Reds which is one of the two big venues so there's Reds and Centre Stage you see Centre Stage there although the entrance is just behind me I'm going to obviously show you inside the skyline later when it's a bit quieter Centre Stage is a huge huge venue it's very massive I don't know if we'll go inside you can't film they're a bit funny about filming inside I might be able to get in there to show you if not I'll do it in June and with the venues, you'll see that there's two entrances, walk up and early access. I've never used the early access myself. I'll try and find out how much it costs, whether it's a flat fee or maybe it depends on like what your break is, when maybe it's per night, I don't know. I'll try and find that information out, but you can get in a little bit earlier because um, the queues do get very long to get into the venues for the evening entertainment. It's not always in the evenings as well. You do get stuff going on during the day. I can highly recommend Bingo Bango if you like uh, bingo, that's always really good fun. And just to the right hand side here, they have the soft play area. So that's in this blue building. They do have some little fairground rides in there for little kids. And that's open from nine till five. And Studio 36 that they're working on, this is a really big venue down at the end. As I understand it, they're gonna be using this as conferencing space to some degree. So they're looking to maybe have businesses coming in and having their like big conferences and meetings. That is what I understand this is gonna be. Whether there's other stuff going on in there or any kind of entertainment, I don't know. I will put a link in the description or some information in the description and see what I can find out. But I did hear that they're gonna be using that some of the time at least um, for conferencing space. 
I just quickly put my head inside the building here, the little stars, soft play. I didn't film in there, obviously. There's families and kids in there. But they do have like a big soft play area. They had a big slide and then a few little fairground rides for little kids. And I should mention as well, just in case anybody does want to know about smoking, there is a smoking area at each of the entrances to the Skyline Pavilion. So there's one, two, three. Um, on either side and then you've got the one that goes down into the boardwalk where you've got like the restaurants and shops and stuff there's one just by the firehouse grill is another smoking area you are not supposed to smoke as you're walking around and you're not supposed to smoke in your accommodation or on your balcony just to let you know about that so we've just come out of the front of the resort right outside the entrance to Butlins to look at the bus timetable because I'm sure some of you will want this information. Anywhere that you're coming from in the country, the nearest train station is Taunton and then you would get a bus from Taunton to here. There's three services, the 28, the 28A and the X28. I'm assuming all of those go from here to Taunton train station and then various ones of them go elsewhere but that doesn't really matter. The main thing is to explain which ones of these go to Taunton train station. So I'm going to study this online because it's really hard to see that map, it's tiny. You can pause it here, I'm going to get a bit closer, then you can see the actual timings and it has the Sunday timings at the bottom there. My understanding is that all of these will go to Taunton train station so they're very very frequent and I should also mention it costs £2 on the bus, very cheap from here to Taunton because it is a fair, it's an hour and something isn't it so it's a very cheap bus and this is as of April 2024 which is what it is at the moment. Oh, and here he is right now. So as you can see, it goes from right outside Butlins. Very convenient, actually, this service. And um, because my head is not really close to any train stations, like, say, Taunton is a little distance away, and it's a very windy road to get here. If anyone's ever driven it, you can get a little bit car sick. But for anyone who's worried, there is a bus service. It's very frequent and very cheap as well, so that's good. And we're going to head into Papa John's Pizza, and I think they do a buffet in here. They do have kids eat for £1, which is quite good. Available daily from 12 till 3pm. Just give you a quick look at the menu, and we did ask, and they said that the buffet is from 12 till 3, and then it starts again five, 5 until, I guess, when it closes. So there's a little bit, yeah, there's a little bit in the middle where you can't get the buffet. So we're here at like 3 o'clock, so we've just missed it, and then it starts again at 5. But we're just going to get something anyway, because we're hungry now. They do have buttons own dishes so as well as the like regular Papa John's menu they have spaghetti bolognese lasagna and some other bits and pieces there and then like the regular stuff so it is it is like a regular Papa John's menu but they just have these extra things on here as well I think we're gonna share a pizza aren't we yeah our food has arrived this pizza actually smells really really does, good it does and then we have the bacon and cheese tots these are really good I love these mm. And then they do give you a couple of dips. We've got the tomato and herb. I think they give us a choice of like barbecue yeah, and a few a others. Few and of course the uh, the classic for your crusts, garlic dip. All the pizza places have those. But yeah, this looks really, really nice. Yeah. I'm now here in the Skyline Pavilion and I've come over quite late at night. It is currently, what time are we? 11 o'clock. And I've come over at this time because it's the only time that's very quiet. Normally during the day, there's so many people around. So I just wanted to show you around and what they have in here. So there's a Burger King just over there. And as you can see, there's like an amusement arcade section, which is actually really, really big through the middle here. And on the right hand side, you've got Papa John's. The entrance is actually just outside out there. I think they used to have this takeaway entrance open, but it never seems to be open now. And you can see some of the old butlins here. They have Jumpin' Jacks, which was one of the clubs. They actually use this now as a prize shop, which I think is a real shame. This used to be a really good venue back in the day. It's been closed for quite a while now. And as you come around here, you can kind of get a look at the scale of this place. It is really, really big. And in the middle here, they have the stage where various shows happen throughout the day. They've got all of these tables and chairs. So you can just come and sit here. Quite often, there's nothing actually on the stage, but it's just a good place to sit. There's a Costa coffee over there, so I quite often get a coffee and just come and sit here. Just to the left is the Transformers meet and greet. And there's a couple of other little shops. This is just like a sweet shop here. And then down at the end, they have a character meet and greet section. So there was Peppa Pig here earlier when I walked past and then those doors at the end go out to the fairground and the characters that you can see here I think they're called the Skyline Gang so I'm now just up by the doors I was just showing you so you can really see the scale of things it's absolutely huge in here like I was saying when I first walked in there was loads here in this arcade section it's actually really really big 
I see people here during the day and you get like tickets that you can convert into prizes. Some people spend all day at these things. Down at the end here you have Bar Rosso, so this is just somewhere you can get a drink. They have a fish and chip takeaway over there, which is actually really nice. I've had that a couple of times and the food there is really good. The boardwalk is where we were earlier today, where you've got the supermarket and various other shops. And this is where they have the uh, trampolines here, the bungee trampolines I should say. And it's five pound per person. You've got to be a minimum of one meter tall to do this. And you have to be over three years of age as well. And down at the end here, you have the entrance to centre stage. So earlier this morning, we were looking at reds outside. This is where you go in to centre stage. You've got the early access queue and the regular one. And like I was saying, this venue is absolutely huge. It kind of goes all the way along. And um, when you look inside, it's massive. I won't be doing that on this trip, but I will on a future trip. And we're now just out at the front of that Lindsay. This is the, I always get it confused, either Bayview or Bayside, Bayside, I think. I'll put it on the screen if I've got that wrong. And um, I will just zoom in. You can kind of see what I mean. The outside really doesn't look great. It needs a lick of paint. As I understand it, the rooms are really nice. Hey everyone, so I'm back from my Butlins trip now. I think the last thing you saw, I was showing you the outside of the apartments out at the front of Butlins. And very shortly after that, we were leaving and heading home and I forgot to just sort of close out this vlog. So I wanted to do that now. The only thing that I didn't get around to actually showing you accommodation wise was Westlake Village, I think it's called, where the chalets are. So I'll definitely show you that next time. I'm actually about to go again in a couple of weeks time. So I'll be there in a deluxe apartment this time and I'll be showing the inside of that and like I said at the beginning of this video I'm also going to be showing a bit more in the way of activities showing you a bit of minehead and other things that you can do more of a regular kind of vlog this one I really just wanted to be more of a tour around the whole camp and the skyline pavilion just a little bit of a tour like I say for those of you who have a break booked and you're just looking to see what it's like I hope you guys enjoyed this and found it helpful if you did please do give it a thumbs up that will help other people to find it and if you want more Butlins content please do subscribe and tap the bell icon and that way you'll be notified when I upload a new video. I do post other things as well as Butlins but I do have more content coming this year. Like I said I'm back in a couple of weeks time and then a couple of other times later this year. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch. I hope you're all well and having a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!